Hello everyone, this is Changappa here and thank you very much for this invite talking at this conference. We have just heard to Dr. Putman speak about scheduling in Twitter. We are going to discuss a similar topic, but the topic will be spread across various social media platforms. We will be discussing about hosting frequencies as well as scheduling and its importance in our attempt to reach our audience. I will be covering this topic starting off with the strategies that we have to adopt starting off with some self-introspection as to who am I and then understanding who my audience are followed by what is the right frequency to post, how much and how often and what time of the day to do we post and should all posts be similar and on what platforms of course. And finally, we'll, look, we'll also look at some part of scheduling. It will be very similar to what Dr. Putman has told us but here we'll be trying to look at other various scheduling platforms where we can probably uh, post over several social media platforms with just one software. So beginning with who am I? This question might sound philosophical, but in a social media context, it's very important to understand who I am and what is my role. Am I a journal editorial team where I'm interested in putting out all my journal material to the target audience? Or am I a teacher who wants to put out interesting teaching videos out on YouTube? Or am I a student representative who wants to communicate with other colleges, other institutes, or with my peers? Or am I part of organizations like, you know, maybe FDA or CDC or ICMR, where I want to put out tweets which mean a lot, which are of national importance. Or I could just be part of a patient support group, wherein I would want to tell my patients what the latest in treatment, research, as well as uh, you know, management of their conditions are and how best they can deal with their conditions. So once I know who I am, I should also understand who, am, who are my target, target audience. For this, there are certain parameters that we would like to know. We would like to know the age of the people who are uh, likely to consume your uh, tweets or Instagram posts, the location, which country they belong to, the language they speak, what occupation they are in, what are their interests, and what stage of life or what stage of career they are in. So as we know, certain social media platform are uh, familiar in certain countries. Some countries may prefer Facebook over WeChat. Some countries may prefer Twitter. Some countries may prefer WhatsApp. So to give you an example, this was a study from the Middle East where they found that for amongst healthcare workers at least, Twitter was the most used social media platform. It was followed closely by Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. Unfortunately, Twitter has been thoroughly uh, completed or covered by Dr. Putnam. So we are left with Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. Another thing that we have to uh, realize when we put out our posts is that people live in different time zones. If your audience are global, if you want to, if you are in India and you want to reach out to somebody in the US or in the Australia, we have to be cognizant of the fact that these people might be sleeping when we actually decide to put out a post. So we have to understand where our audience are located at this point of time and is it the right time to tweet. So once we know all these things, then we can choose what platforms to choose from. We can, we can try and figure out what platforms to choose from. If you look at the users across the world, Facebook has got the maximum usage followed by YouTube and closely followed by WhatsApp. And the last is Twitter. But just the usage does not matter. What matters is how much it is used. You know, people might have installed Facebook in their mobile phones or laptops, but are they going to use it? So there is this data that says Facebook 
is used about or picked up about eight times a day on an average, whereas Twitter is picked up about five times and Instagram following closely at six times. So these numbers are really important to decide how many times a day can I actually tweet or can I actually post on Instagram or can or how many times a day should I post on Facebook. Then coming to the uses of these media are also important because the uses of these media are different while Facebook is primarily to connect and network. You, you search for your old friend, you try to look for your old school group, you, you try to trace somebody who pissed you off and you just know, he, know his name. So, so Facebook is basically to connect with people, whereas Instagram is very image centric. You know, Instagram has to be images. It has, it has got wonderful filters, wonderful uh, options to edit the images. So it is more of a promoting website or a promoting app and also to do some, to some extent to show off. Finally, Twitter. Twitter is generally used by academicians and politicians and it is used widely to share ideas as well as news. And it is more of real time. There's a lot of live discussions going on Twitter. So once we know what platform to use based on our, our audience and our usage or our, our identity, we can decide how much and how often to tweet or post. For instance, if you take Facebook, if you post more than two or three or more than six posts a day, you see that the likes and comments are falling down. So the best way, best thing to do is post once a day consistently. Similarly, on Twitter, it's about three tweets a day till where you can actually keep your audience uh, attention with you. Beyond that, it just weans off. And Instagram, it is also similar. About one to two posts a day is what is optimum. But the key is consistency. You'll have to keep posting every day or at least on the same days of the week and make sure that you post it at the same time of the day and your the people who are your audience or your followers, they actually can expect a tweet, a post from you at that given point of time. So when do I post? So I know now, you know, in Facebook I post once a day, in Twitter I post up to three times a day, in, on Instagram I post up to one or two times a day, but when do I post? What time of day? For this, we again have to understand that different formats are consumed differently. Suppose it is a text, I would prefer tweeting it. If it is an image, I would prefer putting it up on Instagram. If it's an audio, it will go into a podcast. And if it's a video, it will go on YouTube or Facebook. So again, the time of day will depend on what I want to post. Then again, because all these media have different platforms, it is actually difficult uh, or it is actually different for each of these platforms. Then as I mentioned earlier, there are different time zones. You know, 8 a.m. for me might be 8 p.m. elsewhere. So we have to keep in mind if our audience are globally spread, so we have to come up with a strategy that can actually cater to everybody. And finally, the purpose. What is the purpose of my tweet? Is it marketing? Is it educational or is it healthcare? What people have found is educational tweets tend to do better when it is posted a little earlier around. 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. and especially on Fridays and Saturdays. Whereas marketing and healthcare never post them on Fridays and Saturdays or even Sundays. So the best time to post on YouTube because you know YouTube posts long videos, maybe a teaching video. The best time to post would be early morning on a Sunday or a late night on a Saturday so that your customers or your audience can binge watch on YouTube on Sundays. Then Instagram, if, if you see Instagram data, what we find is it's usually Tuesdays after 9 a.m. and Wednesdays around 8 a.m. is the best time to put out your posts on Instagram for various uh, you know, purposes. And then the Facebook. When you see Facebook, it almost behaves like Instagram where you know Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays are prime days, especially between 7, 7 and 8 a.m. is when uh, the maximum engagement 
across this platform takes place. We have to keep one thing in mind. What these heat map like pictures show us is that the maximum engagement, that is most of the users are going to use it at that time. But ideally when we post something, we'll have to post it a little earlier so that you know it gets populated in their feeds and then when they scroll, yours would be the third or fourth feed instead of the first feed. We always feel that the first feed is not the best feed. We, we keep on scrolling and it's the second or third feed that usually catches our attention. Then the next question would be, should all posts be similar? Well, posts should be similar if you are posting the same content across different platforms. Suppose you want to uh, you want to tweet the same thing and then post it on Instagram and then put it up on Facebook. So it has to be similar. You can just have different ideas about the same topic and then post it across various platforms. Then you have to repost to fit the time zones. I'll come back to this. And if the organization you work, you know, mandates that all your posts should form a uniform pattern, then you have no other options but to post them as same or similar tweets. But one thing to keep in mind is similar is not same. You know, they could convey the same information. They could use the same infographics, but you can still change the words. You can still play around with the links. You can still play around with the way it is presented. So we can change some content of the material. For instance, I put up a graph on the image of a graph on uh, Instagram and I put the URL in Twitter. And then I put a video abstract of the same journal article on Facebook. So I'm essentially posting the same material across three platforms in three different ways. So this, this is actually a better way to post things. We can also use stories, reels and vanishing tweets. That is, you know, you could post a story of your older tweet or an older Instagram post and link it back to the older post. You know, that will rekindle uh, interest amongst your audience. But all this managing multiple platforms and juggling between uh, various formats, it actually seems a little complex. To simplify this, people have found so many uh, methods which we will be talking during scheduling. Before that, what we should understand is, what should be the content of a post? You know, should you just, if you are a journal editor, should we just keep paste, posting all the articles that the journal publishes? No. There is a rule of third. The rule of third states that one third of the post, you promote whatever you want to do. You know, just focus on the main thing that is probably a journal article. The other third should be ideas from influencers from the field. Suppose I'm a rheumatologist and I, I am a social media editor of a rheumatology journal. I put out you know, three out of 10 tweets or three out of 10 posts on the article that is of interest. And then uh, the other three of the 10 I will be retweeting some experts or I will be pulling some experts into a discussion or I will be posting some findings that are already being discussed by experts. And finally, the last third of the uh, your post quota, it should be dedicated to showing what your enterprise is, you know, give a personal touch, say that your editor has changed today, say that you have a new team member who has joined as a, you know, copyright editor or something like this. You just this just gives a transparency and the audience feel more connected to your organization. You know, usually it's very difficult to imagine organization as group of people. It's nothing beyond that. So we have to showcase those people or you just have to put out some human touch during these posts. So as we were telling, since it is complex to juggle between all these platforms, Facebook and Instagram, since it is owned by Facebook, let's come out with the creator studio for Facebook. Here you can simultaneously post on both Facebook as well as Instagram. So what you do, you go to the creator studio website, you log in using your Facebook page, login credentials, and then you either choose Facebook or Instagram. Once you choose them, you can start creating a post. Suppose I want to create a post on Instagram. I'll create a post. I'll what, add whatever content I want to post and then I will schedule it. I will schedule it at the right time for the right time zone. 
Yeah, the advantage of such a scheduling platform is that you can have multiple people working on the same platform and you can assign various roles to these people. So what these various roles will mean is that, mean is that uh, each one of them will have limited access to the things that they can do. Suppose in case if an admin can do everything, a data analytic person, a data analyst can only view insights. He cannot edit, he cannot change any tweets, he cannot do anything. So this also adds a layer of security to your data. So, but it is a creator studio by Facebook. So Twitter is left out. Twitter is not part of Facebook. So we'll need a Facebook page to access it. And we'll also need a Facebook page to access, access, access this. So to overcome this, there are several professional social media handling websites, to name a few like Hootsuite, Sprout Social, Buffer, and later. All of this have a free uh, version too, but free version is too limited. Uh, some of the features of these websites are that, you know, it allows you to juggle between one to 50 platforms. And you can assign up to 10 users for the same, uh, for, the, uh, for the same website or for the same uh, credentials. And you can post from anywhere between three per day to unlimited number of posts across various platforms. There are certain plugins. Uh, by plugin means, for instance, you know, you are browsing on PubMed. You have a good article that you want to tweet or you want to post it across three different platforms. And you have this plugin in your browser and you just click it. The, uh, the website itself will convert a thumbnail and some, you know, the introduction of the article and then also post it or schedule it. And finally, you can also get feedbacks. Suppose you are on a, you are on a Twitter discussion and somebody replies back to you. You don't have to log into Twitter again, but rather you can just chat using one of these websites and it will get automatically posted in your Twitter handle. So these are some of the advantages, but they're quite expensive. And uh, unless you're really playing big and you have multiple uh, social media platforms to control or um, uh, use, operate, uh, it does not make sense to use any of this. There are certain things that we are sup not supposed to do while scheduling. You know, we are not supposed to share everything everywhere and we are not supposed to use the same format across Twitter, Instagram, Facebook and YouTube because it does not work that way. Each of these platforms are meant for a different media. Never repost the same content over and over again. You know, your audience will get bored and they'll unfollow you. Instead, you probably can use it in a different way. You create a story of your older post and give a link if you think it is important. Then don't do not schedule too far. Yeah. Uh, medical science at least is rapidly progressing, and every day there are a lot of uh, developments that are going on. So scheduling too far will actually miss out and it might make you obsolete too. Finally, avoid auto replay and automatic direct messages. Suppose you know you have a chatbot that is custom made for your uh, Instagram post. Somebody types in something and it automatically gives out a reply saying that this is this and this. So never do that. Have a human touch. That is when people find it, feel to interact and to continue to interact with your uh, app. Finally, to summarize, we have to understand our role and also understand who our audience are. We have to post consistently at the selected times for each of the platforms and the posting should be optimal. It should not be too much or too low. We can use some of the social media scheduling tools, if, especially if you are handling more than two social media platforms. Eventually, when you keep on doing this, you will find your own style and that would work best for you. Thank you.